Welcome back. I'm with Dr. Brandon Bebout at the Bebout Veterinary Medical Center. And it is very important and pretty vital to kind of watch what your, what your pets eat, especially dogs. Absolutely. Um, our younger guys, our larger breeds, the, the typical foreign body eater is your six to one year old, six month to one year old Labrador. Um, but anybody can do it. Um, we've even seen 10, 11 year olds uh, do things. And it's funny because we hear a lot of owners say, well, they've eaten hundreds of socks and they've always either puked them or pooped them out. Um, but it only takes one um, issue to, to get an obstruction. Um, GI obstructions are always serious. It's always surgical. Uh, and it makes that sock um, or toy or whatever it may be um, very expensive. And so we want to prevent that, even though that goes against the business model um, to prevent things from surg surgery. But uh, we would much rather um, you come in for wellness than come in for um, intestinal surgery because of the seriousness. You can't always watch your animal at all times. So how do you know yep. if your pet has swallowed something? So um, number one, we always tell, I, I, especially depending on the breed that I see on new pet exams, we talk about puppy proofing, just like we baby proof mm -hmm. things, you know, take the things that are glass off the countertops. And, um, and so uh, we want uh, socks and toys picked up, um, especially if we know that they like chewing on those type of things, giving them appropriate things to chew on raw hides. Um, the Kong toys I trust mm -hmm. most of the time. Uh, and, uh, and then it's okay to kennel your pet until we graduate from that kennel. Uh, Dr. Neal's rule uh, was supervised or in a kennel and eventually they'll be able to come out of the kennel. We can trust them. Um, you know, you're not leaving your four-year-old out there and um, kid um, out there uh, alone. He's gonna graduate some of those things, so. Um, but as far as once you've eaten the sock, if you're unfortunate for that, vomiting, vomiting, more vomiting. Okay. Decreased appetite, lethargy. So that one-year-old Labrador, right? 12 out of 10, um, just going crazy. And he's laying there sheepishly, barely wagging his tail uh, and, and has vomiting without an appetite. And, and usually we'll see decreased fecal output as well. And so uh, those are some tell telltale signs. They come in, they see us. Uh, X-ray is going to be um, kind of the best way. There's some other things that we can do, but uh, we're not necessarily looking for the foreign body. Sometimes you'll see mm -hmm. the cloth in the X-rays, um, but we're kind of looking for some patterns, some, some gas patterns and, and dilation, actually, of small intestine specifically. Um, and then sometimes we'll pair that with an ultrasound. And, and we actually have uh, an endoscope as well. And so. Um, a great one is I swallowed the corn cob. Uh, we know the corn cob's in the stomach. Uh, that's something that we can potentially anesthetize, still mm -hmm. still carries a cost, but it beats an abdominal surgery. Go okay. in there, grab that material, sock, golf ball, corn cob are some of the things that we've pulled um, with a snare on that end of the okay. endoscope and able to pull that out and potentially avoid surgery as well. So you said surgery is costly, but what kind of recovery are we talking about after having that? Very good question, and, and, and that's something um, is just as important as, as getting the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So with intestinal surgery, if you're incising into um, duodenum, jejunum, ileum, um, so the small intestinal tract, that is always serious, no matter the best surgeon or the worst surgeon. Um, at day three, four, and five is just the way that the body heals, it actually loosens before it epithelializes and, and, and heals. And so the day three, four, and five are so important. Um, they're the higher risk. Um, and so it's just something where, you know, we don't breathe for a week. And once you're on a week and slow, um, small, frequent meals, um, lots of medication, and, and these guys feel tough for a number of days. I mean, you're, you're, you're borderline septic um, at that point, and most of these guys do really well, um, but it's, it's something that we just would like to avoid altogether. Yeah, so great information. If you have any questions, contact Dr. Brandon at Bebout Veterinary Medical Center. Thank you. Of course. All right, stay with us next week with more Pet Doc.